Hello, it's Amy with Paper Moon Journals, and I have a second huge Cinderella junk journal gift set. This one was a custom order. The person wanted me to get it similar to the other one. I agreed to get it 90% the same. This first little package is a Christmas gift. I would normally have just mailed that separately, but there's a few people who I've made contact with on social media that are customers of mine, and I set aside a few projects to give them as gifts. And anybody who orders between now and when I get them in the mail, I was just gonna tuck it in with their order. And then the little brown box is the actual gift that I like to give free um, with something. But yeah, so um, the little, the little, um, what is it? Jewelry box, that little brown like jewelry box. That one has the actual gift in it, which is pretty cute. Spoiler alert, if this is for you, don't look. Um, so here it is. Originally, it was just going to be this unlicensed Disney Cinderella pin because that's what I found first and then it took so long while I was trying to figure out the gold lace situation which I'll explain later I didn't have all the same things but it opens like a little locket and it's enameled metal it's really nice I just have it strapped down to the cotton there so that it doesn't get tangled up in transit but that's like the free gift saying you know please leave me great feedback but there's nothing on there that says that that's just the idea behind the gift is that people will be so excited about everything that they got especially the gift that they just can't wait to rush and leave feedback so this is the mini book that goes with it the companion journal so a lot of people are maybe a little bit nervous about writing in the other bigger more elaborate one they're like it's too pretty and so this one is, I thought, kind of a nice idea. It's the size that I use. You can take it to a meeting. It's flat, so it fits in your suitcase or a purse or briefcase nicely. And then um, you could write in here. There's lots of places where you can write on the backs of things, which I'll show you in the other project. But this is a great journal if you want one to use and then one to just keep super pretty. Or you can still use it and keep it pretty if you want you know again some people are self-conscious about their handwriting you know if you journal every day but that one's nice and flat and this is just the the companion journal to the other one I know my um, journals are kind of expensive and I had when I made the first one I'd printed out too much stuff so I just made the second journal to go with it because I had too much stuff and then this time I just recreated the same event but yes, this gold lace that was on the cover, I didn't have the same gold lace that I'd used before. And so I had to get, um, I got a variety of different laces and I sent the um, customer a picture so that she could look and see which one she liked. And this was both of our favorite. I think it kind of looks like Cinderella's dress with the coach on there. Um, like the coach is maybe being revealed by her skirt or her dress or something. But we waited to get the crystal coach. And so, you know, we allowed enough um, processing time for her order to get the coach. So I really wanted to make sure we could find a way to get the coach to work on there. Um, without the gold lace, the coach just didn't tie in as well. And I think it looks nice now. I also used my last bit of trim of a sort of that um, embroidered trim. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. And then this gold key that I used as a charm on the cover, it's from Hobby Lobby. It cost a pretty penny, but it just seemed so perfect for this project with the cameo brooch in the middle of the key and it's got little rhinestones on it. I like to imagine that it's maybe that um, Chatelaine key that, um, that the wicked stepmother would have had to lock uh, Cinderella in her room and that later, you know, the mice get back to her and then Cinderella has the key. But I like to imagine that this was the key for, um, you know, that, that locked Cinderella in her room, so to speak. And so I felt like it had to go on the cover. I probably spent a bit too much on charms for this project, but I just want to make sure everything's perfect. And um, when I was down shopping for lace, I also got a collection of, I think it was six or eight um, heart charms that had um, gold, silver, and the burnished bronze with rhinestones and sometimes pearls or whatever. It was a variety of different 
the cohesive collection of hearts so i use those as well there's one charm this big one actually meant to be a pendant a necklace pendant on the cover not so much a charm and then um and then nine more inside and there's a look at the spine in the back i do a better job of getting this in frame entirely once we get it open here, I think I pushed some of the stuff out of the way. I have a new um, setup. I got my, um, I work, was working from home. I had lost my lease on my business. It's a bit of a gator mouth. Um, and it looks great from the top and the sides. Gator mouth just means it doesn't close quite flush. And it's still kind of gaping open a little when it's closed, like a gator's mouth because of his teeth and never closes all the way. Okay, I fixed the mess with the lighting a little bit here. Hopefully this is uh, better. And then uh, what I was saying was I rearranged things. Um, I had to move my office into the house somewhat suddenly. I later found out it was because my the neighbor who had been there longer wanted my spot. So my lease wasn't renewed. Uh, it turns out it was a blessing in disguise. Now I have an office here on my property. We, um, we built with all of our savings, to be honest. We used all of our savings to build an office, but uh, five years of not paying office rent will pay for itself. Um, and I've been in business for like 20 years. So yeah, the money I've wasted on paying other people rent. But yeah, so I had to rearrange my whole filming setup inside. And, um, and so things might be changing just a little bit while I'm trying to figure that out. But here in the journal, we have this beautiful ephemera. Some of it's from Taylor made journal. I try to get the journal as close as possible to the original, but I do put things in a different order. So I sat and watched this video like every morning of the day I was going to work on it to remember what was in it and to get ideas of the direction that it went. But like this project too, if you wanted to write on it and you're self-conscious about your writing, you can just write on the backs of all of the things in this pocket. And then I like to give full sheets folded up in pockets that you can write on and then just fold it back up and put it in the pocket. So there's plenty of place to write on this and it could essentially still look untouched if that was your goal. Or you can just leave it as a coffee table book and um, pull it out to entertain yourself or others or friends. They look pretty as decorations sitting out around the house, I think. They look like beautiful home decor. And then often if people come to visit you, it makes a nice conversation piece because they're like, what is this? And then you start trying to explain to them what it is and you're like, you kind of have to look at it to, to understand. It's like... Um, an interactive book like a pop-up book but for adults it's a little bit reminds me of like the dragonology or the fairyology books where they came with all kinds of little interactive things that come out of the book but you could write inside the envelope which is why I don't seal it shut is you can unfold the envelope right inside use that as a writing space nobody would see your writing there you could write inside all of these sweet little paper doll dresses these are from an Amity Bloom um, paper doll kit that are so adorable somewhere she found this little box of paper dolls with some of the printed dresses and some little handmade dresses that are so sweet and reproduced those and she sells them in her Etsy shop so we have this sweet little paper doll and a bunch of doll dresses um, so that's similar to the first one we have some snippet roll it's a different snippet roll than the one I had before I don't know if you've seen one of those made or if you'd like um, like me to do a video on that I think I might have a short video or something on it they're super fun to do they're addictive and then ideally you would roll them up and store them in a roll I more keep them as snippet strips long strips that hang from a clip I can just group all the strips together and find storing them that way for the book what I have here is the illustrations from the um, golden book it was a little golden book that I got new from Amazon so no um, vintage books were destroyed in the making of this um, and then I tried to follow the order of the story. So at the beginning, it will be her where she's in rags. And then at the end, the um, Disney illustrations will be her with the wedding. Like if we pull all the stuff out of the back pocket, right behind that is a picture of them riding off in the coach. When I put the um, tabs on the end, that's one of the last things I do is add the tabs. I accidentally trapped this into the pocket. <laughs> I just had to untuck it from the edge of the tab. And those were some border strips from Amity Bloom that I had left over. I trimmed out the bottom of that page with some lace and um, 
embroidered roses. And then this envelope was decorated with some ephemera, some of that vintage Cinderella ephemera that was from um, Taylor Taylor made journals. This here is all from Pixie Dust Files and it looks like it's from her um, vintage roses collection. But you could take a lot of the stuff in here and make more stuff. So you could use that green piece to make a pocket. I would put like the flowers on it. And then one of the circles I would leave is like a tuck spot. And then the pocket that you made, you could fill with some of the stuff. So like all of these envelopes and pockets full of ephemera, there's plenty of things in here for you to still play with this journal. It will get fatter. <laughs> um, but there's there's plenty of room for you to play with this journal. If you wanted to make more room for your playthings and um, have it not be so bulky, you could pull out some of the file folder folios. There's three of those in here. They're super bulky. And if you pulled those three out to use in other projects or on something else, then that would make more room. Or if you don't mind, if you don't mind that it just is kind of bulky. When I gift them, I want there to be a little bit of room for people to add some stuff. So I like it to not start out the gator mouth and then it could end up that way maybe. So here's one of those full sheets that I was talking about. This is actually from um, uh, Andrew, uh, Angela Kerr, Angela Kerr Designs. It's one of her papers that's just folded up. So you can unfold it right inside and then fold it back up. And then this pocket here, there's one in every signature that has a side loading pocket made from a journaling card and then um, with the flowers, tuck spot underneath with the flowers. The flowers are from Am Amity Bloom. She calls them pocket petals of pockets or something like that. Um, pockets and petals are both in the name. And then the journaling card that I was using to make the side loading pocket on that, that last page was from um, Sam Poole. On this page, we have some from my sheet music collection. Both of the tags were made from my sheet music collection. And then the pocket behind it is a botanical um, file from Pixie Dust Files. I love Pixie Dust Files and I have a lot of her stuff in here. Same with Sam Poole and um, Amity Bloom. Those are like my three favorite people to use in my projects. They all have something special. Ruby and Pearl XO as well. Although sometimes I end up with too much stuff before I get to her files. Um, I go to my go-tos first and then kind of say, oh yeah, Ruby and Pearl, because she's got some nice vintage document stuff. So here's a top loading tuck spot made with some um, of that what is it called? Snippet strip? I forgot the, what it was called temporarily. And this is one of those file folder folios. It's kind of bulky. I just have tucked up underneath there. But the snippet strips are different each time. So even though this project has a snippet strip and the other one did because of the way they're created from tiny little pieces just glued onto strips of paper and then and into long strips of paper, like say a six foot long strip of paper and then cut into tiny pieces to make pockets or whatever out of. But here's one of those file folder folios. That was a fun kit that I got. It was called Botanical File Folder Folio. And then you can just add whatever theme that you want. You can also trace the pieces out onto papers from new, uh, some new collection and make one that looks exactly like a different paper collection. These button cards are from the Haberdashery kit by Sam Poole. There's a lot of that in here because I was thinking of the dressmaking. So there's a lot of Haberdashery things in here. That was one of her older kits that she made. I really love everything Sam Poole makes. And Amity Bloom, yep. And then this is from one of my digital kits. This is Aunt Aline. It's a digital kit that has a ton of um, vintage ephemera to recreate. And this is a Valentine's card. It has like Valentine's stuff, Christmas stuff. Um, it's so cute. It's from like the 20s to the 40s maybe. There's like an old timey beach picture of um, somebody in an old beach bathing suit on the beach. And um, I love this Valentine one. It looks really pretty. And I think I'll put one in my next fairy project. My next custom order I'm working on is a fairy project. I've been really fortunate lately. I've been busy working on custom orders. I haven't done anything um, 
any fresh Christmas things really this year, aside from some design team collaboration stuff. I did take part of a day off between projects to get started three separate Christmas journals so that I can have some new things instead of just um, recreating similar things. I need some new stuff that people might want in the future that I'll need to recreate next year. <laughs> right I'd like to do Christmas coffee shop again I know I did one with the um, Christmas cats and Christmas dogs those were so cute I'd love to do those again just with fresh inspiration just print out all the same kits pick a different cover that kind of thing go through it with all the things I have now because I'm constantly getting new things thanks to everybody buying from my Etsy shop I probably did already say it but I'll say it again and again thank you so much to everybody that buys at my Etsy shop we are on a really tight budget here at our household and um, the money that I make from selling my journals allows me to buy my journaling supplies and it's such a relief that it's not a drain on the family and that I don't have to feel guilty or anxious about buying beautiful things to make these journals I can buy the best charms and the best glue and the best double-sided tape and so forth have all of the tools that I want thanks to people buying from my Etsy shop it all goes right back into the journals buying more paper and everything it's a hobby business so um you know but yeah it even does excuse me at sometimes like during the holidays when I'm able to sell some of my backlog of things I created earlier in the year the extra income allows to help pay bills or to buy I collect dolls so it allows me to buy maybe some of the dolls that I wanted I collect play dolls so they're not usually very expensive um, like Monster High, Rainbow High. If there's any other dolls out there, doll lovers out there, shout out to you all. Um, but yeah, yeah, not as much into the baby dolls, more into the fashion dolls. I love the anime style dolls. Um, those are really cute. The vintage Barbies. I like Barbies dressed in like modern clothes, like cool, hip, modern clothes is my favorite thing. Maybe a few vintage 80s, some nods to my teenage years or the 80s um, so that's fun but I hope you're enjoying the journal as I continue flipping through it with my chatter um, I've shown the different charms up to the camera and held things up for you to look at while I'm talking uh, speaking of holding up to look at I made this bookmark I forgot to share it's a nice velvet um, like ribbon and then there's a charm on each end that adds weight and then that helps it to dangle from the book so that it looks pretty and can mark a page and if we look in the book here we can see that Cinderella's just about maybe she's got that key from the cover she's going up into the attic about ready to get trapped there's a side tuck spot speaking of trapped the stuff's trapped pretty tightly under there that side tuck, tuck from the snippet strip and then there's a pretty crown charm. I got the collection of crown charms from Amazon and I absolutely love those. The ones that are half crowns glue nicely onto top of characters to make them wearing the crowns as I'd hoped they would when I ordered them. I got two collections of the crown charms so that I wouldn't um, be too covetous and I'd actually use them. Unless I have enough of a supply, I just want to hoard it and, I, and then I don't want to use it. I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to things. I, I love things and um, I love I, almost everything I see is what I say. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't come into the Goodwill, but like once a year, why? Well, and they know me. I'm like, well, you know, I love everything I see. So, you know, I can't, I can't come in very often. <laughs> so yeah, and they do, they remember me. And there's a reason why they remember me, even though I don't come in very often. And it's because in the past, um, I would buy two or three cartloads full of stuff. But that's a different story. At one point, we had lost everything that we owned due to disaster. And then, um, you know, that was the days where we were filling three shopping carts full of clothes because we had nothing and we needed everything. And it was also the changing of seasons. So it was hot, but it was getting cold at night and it was going to be winter. So we were buying both summer and winter clothes all at once um, for everybody in the family. So yeah, and then we needed dishes and platters and, you know, we needed everything. We'd lost it all. So anyways, it's happened to other people. We weren't alone. And um, we feel very blessed to be happy where we are now. Um, I just joke that where we were was nice, but it's not as nice as where we are now. And maybe it just took a like a bomb, not literally, but like a bomb to, to blast us out of that old neighborhood and into the neighborhood that we prefer. 
um, because we would have never left. We were settled in for the long haul. And, uh, and if disaster hadn't struck, you know, we'd still be living there. So it was just smaller and crowded in a, a busier city. And then now we live in a rural area that's very friendly and nice and small town and homey. It smells great when it rains, that kind of thing, instead of just smelling like wet asphalt. My apologies for not having this up um, into frame. I will, as I said, I think this is a new filming area for me. And so I'll be more careful to, um, to make sure that it's up in frame. It looks like it is when I'm looking up at the phone, but, um, but it's obviously not. I don't need all that stuff in the top of the frame there. I, I'd gladly shove that out of the way to get this to work. So a lot of the things, I think we might have missed some of the tags, a lot of the special images from the book I saved to make tags and I glittered them up. Like I added, like laced the lace through, I threaded the lace through on the bottom and added a lot of detail to the tags to make them extra special. I think these are like my favorite tags that I've done. Um, that came out on this book. I know I'm not still showing them anymore, but I'm still going on and on about them because I I just love how they came out. Um, these journals are really so much fun for me and a, a labor of love. Uh, I, I just get so into it um, that once I get going, I'm just kind of a slave to the journal and what needs to happen next. This needs to go here, that needs to go there. And I can't find myself taking time for breaks or anything else. Um, yeah, and I need to get my day job done today, and here I am having fun doing a voiceover, sharing this video project because I was so excited about how it came out and getting it in the mail. And as I said before, the um, the buyer had had been in contact with me on social media, which I really appreciate. I don't know if people feel like they'd be bothering me. You're not. It makes me not that I think that I'm a rock star. I totally don't, or a superstar, or anything like that. But it makes me feel like like one. I'm like, oh, this must be what famous people feel like. Somebody's reaching out to me and has th nice things to say, like. Um, or questions to ask. They, th they think I'm smart and they want to ask me questions. Like this makes me feel good. So if you have questions or like I sell PDFs and tutorials in my shop that have videos here. And um, if people need help, like don't be embarrassed, ask. Like I'll be embarrassed that it wasn't clear. First of all, I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry that that wasn't clear enough. And then I'll take, I'll redo the project and take a picture of me doing it. I'll film a little video snippet and send it off to you or like whatever. I want you to be able to do it. I do not want you to sit there with like one of my tutorials or instructions and be in tears and all frustrated because that, that would make me, that makes me want to cry. Like, that's the last thing I want. I share these because I hope to make it easier and more fun for people. And then the few dollars I charge for it does help. You know, I put like $5 or $6 or something on it. It um, If I can sell a few every month, then it covers my advertising, which is $30 a month. You know, so that'd be nice if it could cover the, the advertising cost for the shop. Um, but yeah, I, I really do it to help people, not, not for the money. Um, and I have more I'd like to get up because I have all these great things that I've done where I sat and typed out all the instructions for myself to redo them. But on screen here, I'm showing these beautiful paper doll dresses that came with one of the two or I guess three paper dolls that come in this journal. Two of them are specifically Cinderella paper dolls, vintage. This one is from the 40s. And then the other one is much older from the, the 1900s, I would guess. Um, and that comes up at the very end. And then in that little envelope were some missing pieces from um, the little outfit for the paper doll. She had some tiny little bows and a little purse. These tags are so special. I added the glitter and all the lace with the fairy godmother and Cinderella. Like I said earlier, I wanted to keep some of those really special scenes um, in tags. I know the one where um, where she's in rags is a set of tags too. So I have a feeling that I forgot to show you some of the tags in my excitement. I love how this dress came out, the layers of the lace. And that's something I wouldn't have remembered to do if I hadn't been re-watching the other video of layering the lace up like that. It looks so pretty. 
And I get these good ideas and then forget all about them and never do them again. So um, my family will tease me for rewatching my videos, but it's helpful because I'm like, wow, I forgot all about that. That was a good idea. So here's another, <laughs> another paper, speaking of good idea, here's another paper doll uh, dress inside this little envelope so you could take your laces and trims and decorate it being inspired by the one that I made. So I did one that was all decorated and then there's, a, I think, just one other one in here that you could decorate yourself if you wanted. There's some stuff from the swan kit. There's also some things in here from uh, Pixie Dust Files uh, Etsy shop. Also their essentials and then their, um, what's it called? Oh, I can't think of it. I think of it as kind of a really religious one. It's called Divine Neutrals. So while there is some strong religious and Catholic overtones to it, there's so many beautiful neutrals in there that I can use it in a lot of projects, even if they're not things that would go well with a religious theme. Uh, so if you've been shying away from getting that kit, um, don't because it's great. It's just like her essentials, I think. I, I use almost everything in there. There's a couple images of the Virgin Mary that maybe aren't as, you know, for if you want something cheerful and fun and playful, that that's, you know, she's a little bit more serious or somber and, and serene would be the tone that I'd be going for if I was using Virgin Mary and things. Um, I mean, it could go in a Cinderella journal because it, it, she gets married in a church and things like that. So I, I don't think it, it would be opposed to that in here. But in some projects, it just doesn't go. You know, again, if it's a, doing a Mother Goose journal that's supposed to be fun and like for children, you wouldn't want maybe that. But then some of the other things I could use. Um, also in a fairy journal. See, I don't think I'd use the Virgin Mary in the fairy journal. There's a lot of other things in that Divine Neutrals kit that I definitely use in my fairy journals. So the kits are really versatile if you think about ways of how you can use them in other projects. That file folder folio that I just barely had on screen and was trying to show you, um, my apologies here. I feel really sad that this has gotten off off screen and I hope um, that nobody will complain about it. Uh, part of me wishes I could redo this video, but right after filming the video, I wrapped it up, boxed it up, put it in the mail. And so I don't have a chance to redo it. If I'd seen I was off camera before um, I boxed it up, I would have redone the video. I would have sat and just redone the whole thing. Darn the half hour it took me or whatever. I just go ahead and do it anyway. You can see we're getting toward the back because we have the wedding scene. It, from the um, from the golden book, we've gotten to the wedding scene, and some of these tags with her dancing with the prince, where I added lace and lots of sparkle and threaded lace through the card, and with lots of bows and stuff. Like I just love how this came out. And then I don't think I show inside the back cover, but like if we took everything out of the pocket inside the back cover, it's the scene of them driving away with the coach. You can see kind of the top, it's in a heart. You can see kind of the top of the heart peeking out. But since I don't take all the stuff out of the pocket, the video was getting kind of long. We made it to the end of the video. Leave a little pumpkin in the comments so I'll know that you made it to the end of the video. If anybody made it to the end of the video, I'm going to try to stay out of the statistics information because that can be disheartening. I think that, you know, if I think that so many people saw my video and then I go look and I'm like, oh, almost all of them checked out after five minutes, though, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to try to stay out is what I'm saying. I don't want to know for now. I'll wait until I have more confidence or whatever. I've looked at them recently and it's definitely it's just not leave the good vibes. And so, um, so I'll stay out of there for a while until I have the internal fortitude to face that kind of news again. <laughs> it did threw me for a loop, but my videos did, um, get, get some better views after that. So here it is the, the whole big fat giant junk journal gift set. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching it, found it entertaining. Like I said, I'll go back and rewatch my videos for inspiration, sometimes just to get in the mood. Often it's to recreate a project because somebody wants a custom order. Sometimes they like to custom order the redo of the project and I wouldn't be surprised if this happened. I did get quite a bit of the gold lace that I used on the cover this time, so I could make a number of Cinderella uh, um, journals without running out of the gold lace this time and it does seem like I'm able to get a decent supply of the little Jimmy coaches 
so I could, I could do it pretty much the same. As far as the key and the charms, I don't know if I can get those the same because Hobby Lobby does rotate the things that they keep in stock. But as always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.